Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to change an M-Audio ProFire 2626 into standalone mode. Now to begin this tutorial I'll start by defining what a hosted and standalone mode are. The hosted mode is your main interface talking and sending information to and from your computer. The standalone mode, the unit is only talking to and sending and receiving um, audio data to and from different interfaces. So there's nothing going on between the computer and it. It's simply sending the data and the info to the different audio interfaces. So it's going to send its data to the hosted one, which then sends the data to your computer. Now, all of these have to be in sync and properly configured. And I had this problem where I didn't have the uh, Profire 2626 that I have in standalone mode. So I would frequently get zero signal. There would be no signal to and from the uh, Profire 2626. Um, and I, I use it only for its outputs because I use the outputs to go into a mixer, which I mix down and come back in on my main hosted uh, Steinberg UR824 interface. Now, I'll walk you through the steps on how to turn it into standalone mode. So the first step is to connect your first standalone 2626. For me, I only have one 2626 and it's always ever going to be in standalone mode. So I just connect it to the computer via firewire port and then I start the computer and I can turn on the interface before or after the computer started. Um, and then I launch this um, Profire 2626 control panel. And in the settings tab here, this is where you're going to set the uh, standalone mode. So I am using, for the most part, the optical ports, which is the ADATs, the port A and port B and stuff. Um, and for me, I like to use word clock, but I have a Focusrite interface that doesn't have a word clock sync input. There's no way to use word clock with it. So for that interface, I use the uh, ADAT optical port to sync the audio. Um, and I'm likewise doing the same with the uh, M Audio uh, Profire 2626. So I sync it by selecting optical port A, that's the sync source, and then the converter mode, you have to have it at A, D, and D to A. This I think is the most important part for the standalone mode to work, for everything to work properly. Uh, the other thing is you have to completely configure each one of your interfaces to be at the same uh, sample rate. So for me, I always run in 44.1 um, and I have to click on this uh, settings tab. I also have to go into my um, Sapphire Mix control and change it to 44.1. And then I also configure it in my Steinberg uh, interface control panel. Now everything is in sync. Now there's a few more things that you have to do. Uh, the first thing is to tell your inputs and outputs, your ADATs, ins and outs, where they're coming from and where they're going to. Um, in, the pref <laughs> pre in the Sapphire uh, mix control, you do it by selecting your inputs outputs in this section and telling them where to go. Um, in the Profire 2626 configuration window, that's going to be in this router section. So you tell it where everything goes and where it comes to and from. Um, now, if you have a Profire 2626 that you're going to use in hosted mode, then what you do is you finish all your standalone configurations and you have to do this one at a time. So only power up the interface that you're configuring. For me, I only have one. Let's say I had two and I had also a hosted uh, Profire 2626. I would then shut off my standalone um, 
Profire 2626. Then I would start up my hosted one, um, and then it would change because I haven't configured it yet. This stuff would probably go to the default. For that, I would have to go uh, make sure that the sync source is internal. I would have the optical port B probably just set at ADAT. I don't think I'm using the ADAT port B, so I don't have to really worry about that. Same with this section. Um, but likewise, you have to configure the same sample rate for all your interfaces. And then the buffer size as well is pretty important. Um, I always have it at 1024 because that's quite plenty of a buffer size. I pretty much never have experienced any clicks or pops um, at that setting. Um, but it's also a high enough setting and a low enough setting where um, the, uh, what do you call it, the lag or the delay that you usually get in recording and playback, it's compensated through Cubase. It kind of takes care of that. So I pretty much never have to change this to anything lower because uh, Cubase kind of just compensates for it. Um, yeah, so then once you have that all configured, then you don't really have to worry about this other than conf uh, configuring your mixer routing properly. And once you've done that, then you don't have to keep this thing open and you can turn on all your interfaces and then you, uh, you start up your, like, let's say Cubase, your DAW, and then you can just test your inputs and outputs, make sure everything's working, and then you're done. So one more quick note before we wrap things up is that once you've configured your Profile 2626, the one you want in standalone mode, once you've made those changes by connecting to your computer with the FireWire cable, those settings should be stored within the unit itself. So you should be able to just disconnect that FireWire cable and then those changes you've made should be stored and should remain even though it's not connected through FireWire. Um, for me, I just leave it connected because I don't need those extra uh, FireWire inputs or ports or whatnot. So it's no problem for me to just keep it connected. Um, but if you run into the situation where you need more uh, FireWire inputs or outputs or ports or whatever, and you need to disconnect something, then you could disconnect your standalone interface. All right, so that's how you set up your ProFire 2626 into standalone mode. So if you have any further questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you like stuff like this, um, leave a like and maybe even think about subscribing to my channel. So thanks and take care. Bye-bye.